How we doing guys? Um, so welcome to Just In Comics. Today we are going to do a little how-to video and I'm gonna show you my, uh, my little humidity tank here that I built and uh, basically go over how I clean and press books. I've seen a lot of people um, make different videos and I thought it was kind of time to show my process and what I've learned through other YouTubers and um, a couple different people through Instagram that have their own business, um, whether it's flipping, selling, or uh, just restoration, cleaning, grading, submitting to CGC, or um, the other grading sites. Uh, you know, So I, I wanted to show you how I do it and I think that would be really cool. So. Um, first off, you obviously have to have a comic book. So I will be um, posting some um, pictures here and there. This was probably one of the worst books that I've ever brought back. And you can see, so I'm, I'm holding it as flat as I can here, but it still lifts a little bit right here. Normally a book would be pretty much closed right there, but I will have the before and after pictures up um, here and there, just gonna show you what I did and, and what I do. Um, I, I did a really good job. Uh, let's see how we can how we can get this this spine on the screen here. Um, it was bent. There we go. Get that light. It was bent really really bad, um, and I had to do quite a few sessions as far as the press and what I have been learning pretty much throughout the most of it is timing. So. You can do different versions of just like a quick press if it's just something simple. And I had one of those issues with my once in future number one, but unfortunately the color broke. So you can always repair something that's damaged, but you can't remove something from the book. So let me explain what that means. If the color is broke and it's ripped, you obviously can't repair that. You can't bring it back to what it was, but if it's bent, wrinkled, or has some pebbling as far as like some indentations, you can repair that, you can bring that part back, but you can't you can't create what has already been destroyed because that that is when the book has become like a purple label or something has been changed or altered on the book. So the first process, what I like to do is, let me get this. Um, these are your, your, your top three things. You just want a normal art eraser. Um, I bought like, I think 15 for like five or six bucks from Amazon. Second, you want an art. Um, and I say art just because like these are really, really good for an, as far as an artistic tool. Um, so this is a, a gum eraser, G-U-M. And then you have your magic eraser. You can get these anywhere. And um, I'll try and See if you can see how dirty that is up top. So you're just pulling and even you have a little bit of red there. So I, I went a little bit too hard on, on that book. Um, but really these three things and a microfiber towel. So these three to four things are pretty much all that I use. I, I don't go over the top with it just because I believe in keep it simple, stupid. So um, obviously I'm gonna show you some more books here. So I purchased, this, is, this one hasn't been um, cleaned and uh, pressed yet. So this is pit number one. A lot of waves, I know I'm not holding it the best as far as um, keeping it even, but you can see here that this is like definitely bent here and we don't want that. We got a couple, got a couple ticks. Gosh, I need to get better about showing you guys where, where this is. Um, you got some waves at the bottom and it's just really kind of lifted there. You can see that. Um, let's see if I can show you those ticks on the spine. There's one right in the middle, and I think I got a couple more near the top. So I purchased pit one, two, and three um, for a pretty good price because they were obviously not in a good, you know, not in a good state before I made these books. So I think it was important to to do that. All right, so let's get to the most important part of the video is building. Now I, I stole this from somebody on Instagram that I admired his work, uh, slabbed heroes on Instagram. He has his own cleaning, pressing and submitting and restoration, um, comic book company and a website. Awesome guy. He will reply to a lot of your messages if you have questions and stuff like that. So it's about building the sandwich, right? So you find, 
Now I'm gonna use, um, I have not, I, I've only been working on this book as far as like uh, um, getting dirt and just small things off of it and because there was just a lot of dirt on the back. Um, so I've been working on this one for a, a pretty good amount of time like that. That ad is crazy. Um, so you find the center of the books. You can see right there, you know, the two staples. That's what we want to protect. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Also, you want to make sure that your boards are straight. After a, a certain amount of time, the heat will tend to warp these a little bit. So you have to be conscious, conscious of that. Um, very simple. You pinch the staples, get them in between those boards, and there you go. So your book is already pretty much step one done. After that, you would put it in your humidity tank. So my humidity tank, I wanted to build something basically from scratch that I knew would work for me. Um, let me get a little bit better on that here. Excuse my short shorts. I actually don't excuse them, I like them. All right, Walmart, you just get you a plastic tub. I think this was like five or six bucks. Secondly, after that, the most important part, now there is a cheaper way to do this as well. You could literally put just a bowl of water in there if you wanted to, that's completely fine, um, and, and leave it in there for that amount of time. So I bought this humidifier from Amazon for like 10 bucks. Distilled water, nothing else in there, no incense, nothing crazy. After, if, if it ever has anything in it, it's completely ruined because that's what you're gonna be putting back into the books. Um, depending on the integrity of the book, you're looking for about three to five minutes. Um, and I, I mean, if that sucker is super wavy, has a lot of wrinkles or a really, really bad wrinkle or um, just a, a really bad tick on the spine, and that's what my Once and Future book had, um, you can alter a little bit. You can you can maybe do six, six and a half minutes. So I, I've been taking notes for every single book that I clean or grade. I watch what I do to the book to make sure, you know, if this worked for this, then I know that I, I can apply it to another book. Basically just keeping track of my evidence and, and altering it to get better and better. Secondly, I bought some wooden dowels. Um, I think I got 10 for like two or three bucks on Amazon. I wanted something that would absorb um, moisture and, and not drip um, because I can't have up to four books in here at once. And I uh, got these cool little guys. Also, these are underwater fish uh, fish tank, um, I guess just shelves or, or just whatever you want to use them for. Um, these will absorb, mo absorb the moisture and most of the time I haven't seen actually any dripping at all. And then I drilled a, a, a quite a few holes as far as like a, a vent or an exhaust, so to speak. So it, it would trap moisture in there, but not over, you know, over trap the moisture. I, I didn't want to create like, I, I didn't want to trap it all in there. I wanted to, to have the box breathe just a tiny bit. So um, pretty simple. I put the book in there just like this, lock it up for three to five minutes. After that, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll transfer over to my heat press, my t-shirt press, and um, you wanna do this as soon as possible. You, after, after you lock this up, the transfer from, um, from book to heat press is, is one of the other crucial steps because if you let that moisture sit in the book for too long, you'll ruin the book. No matter how many times you press it and try and get it back to what it was, either you're gonna burn the book or you, you've just lost it for the most part. Um, and once again, I, I, I will show some pictures of before and after of, of where I've gotten these books. I've gotten pretty good at it. I'd like to get good enough to where I can start helping you guys. Um, just because it can be really expensive to send these books off. I know some people are as low as seven bucks, 10 bucks, or even higher. Um, I haven't really started, I haven't really felt 100% comfortable enough to, to really open up my own business to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's transfer over to the heat press. All right, so let's pretend that we just took the book out of the press. This is your standard t-shirt press. I got it on eBay for, I think, Black Friday for like 70 to 80 bucks. I think it's like a, a 12 by 10, so I can almost get two, two books in here if they're just your standard comic book. Um, so, uh, yeah, take my pretend book out. 
I already have my sandwich in there, so it's important also um, to make sure that, that, you, that you keep it as close to the spine as possible because when I had first started, I was just placing it in there and not worrying about it being fully flush as possible. So when you're pressing that book, I, a few of the books that I had had some bends in there along the crease, but I was able to fix it. Um, but you can see this one's got tons of issues, a uh, bunch of lines and a pretty good bend right there. So um, I won't show the before and afters for this one yet just because I wanna clean up the back just a little bit more. Um, you can't really see it that well. I don't know if it's my lighting or my camera, but we'll figure that out. Um, after, you still have the sandwich in there. Some people can press it with the boards or without. I found um, after my trial and error that keeping the boards in there was a little bit better because your, your transition um, process from um, the humidity tank to your t-shirt press or your heat press is, you know, yes, sometimes I wear gloves, uh, most of the times that I do, but you're, you're, you're messing with the book a lot and you're, you're leaving it out. So all that moisture and all that time um, is being wasted instead of being put in the press. So um, another wonderful thing is, is while doing this is you have, you have a lot of chances to, I mean, learn and grow. Like it, you can, you can learn it really quickly or, you know, you can just you can mess up a lot of books. Thankfully, I haven't messed up that much just because I guess the student in me or the learning process in me is that I really want to take time before just jumping into it. But um, if you were paying attention as I was talking, I wanted to focus on the cover. So what we're doing now is putting another back and board um, or yeah, back or board, whatever, uh, under the cover. So I would put it under here. And now these are flammable, uh, uh, like basically just high intensity uh, Teflon. I think it might be Teflon, I can't remember, paper. Um, so I put it on there just like that. So you can use a backing board or I, I also do have some pretty great um, just standard inkjet uh, paper here. So sometimes I will do this um, for that cover, I won't. Um, it, it really just depends and I can break that down further, but I just wanted to show my process as of now. So normally I would click this, let it heat up um, and it'll beep once it hits my certain temperature. And what we wanna focus on as far as temperature is between 140 and 150 Fahrenheit. And then um, I would close it down just like this. I'm not gonna do it all the way just because um, just don't wanna waste that press of the book. Um, and after that humidity process, remember three to five minutes, that book is, is pretty messed up. So I would probably do five to six minutes right there. And um, then I would leave it in here for 10 to 15 minutes. As soon as that hits that 10 to 15 minute mark, I'm gonna turn it off and leave it pressed and leave it closed for 24 hours. So that is how I was able to get this pit book. And remember, um, when I first showed you it, it was, I mean, it was bent like this. So you'll, you'll see that. And, and probably after a good amount of time, the integrity of the book will go back to that just because it, it was like that for, I mean, you know, who, who truly knows how long, but um, I, I've been able to save a, a pretty good amount of books, um, got some, uh, a pretty good amount of books from a uh, half price bookstore, just, you know, dollar bin issues that I've been practicing on and cleaning, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how I do it. I'm going to transfer back over and talk a little bit more and uh, we'll wrap up this video. All right guys, so that is how I um, I press and clean books. So I will definitely be getting um, efficient and I guess overall just confidently um, ready to help other people in, in a good amount of time. You know, I've wanted to practice and critique and master my trade before helping others. Um, and I know that you're, you're looking at my amazing mustache here, so you're welcome for all this, you know, if you stuck with me this long. It, it, it is a beautiful mustache. So I'll leave a comment below if you love my mustache. <laughs> um, yeah, so clean, really look over that book, get you some erasers, magic eraser, gum eraser, microfiber towel, some backing boards, some paper, um, some nonstick high temperature paper, or you know anything of that sort. Build a humidity tank, and I'll make a better video about this again. Um, I just wanted to show a very quick 
in depth, not in depth, a quick video and breakdown of how I necessarily do it. So clean, humidity, press, it just depends on the book and, and, and basically don't be afraid to, to mess up because if you're failing, that means you're, you're trying. As long as you don't give up entirely, that means you can completely master something that you're working out. So thanks for sticking around for the TED Talk too. So, All right, guys, y'all take care. I look forward to hearing the comments and concerns and questions. And thank you so much for checking out my video. Peace.